Hello everyone, it's me, Maddie's Masquerade, so... And now for something completely different. I'm not playing a game tonight. Instead, I'm rehearsing a panel that I hope to get at uh, Anime USA later this year. This panel is about the unbiased history of 4Kids Entertainment. Uh, rumors debunked. I have a miniature version of this panel on my YouTube channel, which you can check out there. But um, I'm, b but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try and extend it to an hour. The previous one I threw together for the online convention Cosplay Day out, or in this case, Cosplay Day in, back in 2020, just because someone sent a message saying that they re needed panels for filler quick. Um, well, it's 9 o'clock, and it's time to start the unbiased history of 4Kids Entertainment, Rumors Debunked. Now, before we start the panel, I have a disclaimer. I will not be biased towards any anime dub unless it had a major effect on someone in the industry. So if you're here because you want to see another big rant about how bad the One Piece dub was, or about um, hammer, weird gun hammers, or donuts, or Shadow Realm, or any other joke that's been run into the ground for the past 20 years, please click out of this window right now. One Piece is a bridge we'll cross when we get to it. Anyway, let's start the panel. 4Kids Entertainment had actually started as a different company known as Leisure Concepts Incorporated. I wasn't able to get a very small, uh, a very big company, a, a big uh, picture of the logo, but uh, yeah, they were simply a licensing company, licensing products for licensing for different uh, for different properties. You may have seen this in the this along with the Summit Media Group logo for the classic Thundercats. These, um, because, yeah, the Summit Media Group is also, uh, something you might have seen in the cr credits for the first season of Pokemon as well. That was their media buying arm. Which was no, yeah. The company, yeah, because it was back in the 80s when Alfred Arcon, a name that makes a lot of people tremble in fear, and Norman J. Grossfeld joined in 87. That's when they renamed the company 4Kids Entertainment, and its production arm was known as 4Kids Productions. And what was the first show that they produced? Here's a hint. It's actually not Pokemon. It's... WMAC Masters. If you don't remember this show, I don't blame you, but this show, WMAC Masters, first aired in local syndication. It actually did get some reruns on the Fox Box in 2003 and was on the 4Kids website for a little bit. But yeah, this re relatively unknown show was the first thing that show that was produced under the name 4Kids Entertainment or 4Kids Productions. Huh? It wasn't until 1998 that 4Kids became risk takers when they first licensed when Nintendo first licensed Pokemon to them. Now, what do I mean by risk takers? Well, at the time, Pokemon was m best known as 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 they say on the Simpsons, isn't this the cartoon that causes seizures? Yeah, that Porygon incident was all anybody known for it. <laughs> but did it pay off? Well, of course it did because it made them, you know, that's what put four kids on the map. And then in 2001, they started licensing three other shows. Uh, there's a, something called Tama and Friends, which you also probably never heard of. Something known as Cubix Robot, a uh, uh, Korean co-production with the uh, company Cinepix called Cubix Robots for Everyone. But their other big cash cow alongside Pokemon was, of course, Yu-Gi-Oh! Back in 1999, four kids had struck a deal with Kids WB for their programming with Pokemon, so they logically picked up Cubix and Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm guessing WB passed on Tama and Friends? Tama and Friends aired in local syndication on very early Saturday mornings. It was one of those shows you had to check your local listings to figure out where and what channel it was on. Let's see. But then in 2002, things expanded for them. 
Introducing the Fox Box. The Fox Box was, uh, was as you probably know, a four-hour vlog on the network Fox. It was created because, um, after some stuff with Sab after Fox and Saban started losing money, and the and Fox was sold to Disney, which created the Jetix block and caused Power Rangers and Digimon and everything to shift over. Fox put up its programming for bidding, and Four Kids Entertainment won the bidding, and that's how we got the Fox Box. This is. The, the early launch shows of this block were Stargate Infinity, which they had licensed from Deke, from what was then known as Deke, now DHX Media, and the English dubs for Fighting Foodons, Ultraman Tiga, Kirby Right Back Atcha, and Ultimate Muscle. Later in the year, they would also premiere their, the, their um, version of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But the thing is, what, but there is one rumor that started back in the 2002 when the Fox Box started. The rumor is that four kids acquired Ultraman Tiga just to explain a reference in Kirby right back at ya. Some people, this is because of the way the four kids of Ultraman was handled. An a interview that I can link to later if you want me to um, shows that four kids actually licensed Ultraman Tiga because of how successful Power Rangers was on Fox Kids, and they wanted a similar toku, toku show. Um... Yeah, that I mean, I don't really know. I don't think they would acquire a show just to explain a joke in another show. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, then so yes, yeah, so the two thousand three season of the yeah they also acquired the Cramp Twins on the same week as Ninja Turtles and something called Pirate Island, as well as some Australian show adventure show called Pirate Islands and the Back to the Future cartoon. Um. Then in 2003, they also had start. They dubbed uh, Shaman King and Sonic X. Sonic X being the thing that would remain on their block until God no, until it completely died, and something called Funky Cops from a French company that sort of died as soon as it started. Then, but they had also announced a different show called the Winx called Winx Club as well as something that would premiere later called Magical Do Re Mi. They were in talks with Toei to get Magical Do Re Mi, and that's gonna link to the upcoming quote unquote elephant in the room, because they wanted to diversify the Fox Box with that and what was then called Hollywood Mew Mew with to also known as Tokyo Mew Mew. And being part of Nintendo's arm, Nintendo licensed F Zero GP Legend out, out, over to them. I'm, I'm that that didn't last too long either, but I'm sure people remember Fal have seen the Falcon Punch clip of that. It, but yep, here we go. It's the elephant in the room. I'm sure the thing that most people who are watching this probably came to talk about. Uh, One Piece. Now here is rumor number two. That f some people believe that four kids just kind of blindly picked One Piece when they licensed it, not even knowing about its content, and that they only acquired it between its art style and its popularity in Japan, not even really caring to view it and just blindly picking at it due to that. That's half right and half wrong. It's absolute. The right part is that four kids didn't really do much re research and didn't view it first, but acquiring it wasn't exactly their idea. They didn't even. They never wanted it at first. Toei Animation. They're the reason four kids decided to dub One Piece. They by basically badgering four kids into doing so. They weren't acting on their own. As I mentioned before, when it came to Toei, you know, they were they produced their own second season of Ultimate Muscle because Ultimate Muscle was so much more popular in the US, TV Tropes term Durbin's love David Hasselhoff, and they want and of course as I said before, they wanted Magical Doremi or Origin Majo Doremi as they called it in Japan because they wanted to di to do attempt to diversify the Fox Box to appeal to girls just as much as boys. But as they were making these deals, Toei lit was just begging and badgering them to duh, to license One Piece. The only reason that Toei wanted four kids to have One Piece, because you may have heard that Funimation was in the bidding for it at first, there were two reasonings behind that. One, Toei wanted to get 
One Piece on American television as quickly as possible. Four Kids had an entire four-hour block on a broadcast network, and Funimation just had this, um, this side network, the Funimation channel, that barely anybody got, and it, even my my own grandmothers who had Nicktoons and what was then called Toon Disney, they didn't have Funimation Channel at all. It was barely registering a blip on anything, while the Fox Box was mu- was be on literally everywhere with a TV. So they went. So that's why Toei decided to to beg four kids to take One Piece and just ignored Funimation. Of course, another reason about that is that for when Funimation was looking to license One Piece, they made a test pilot that Toei didn't like because Eric Vale did the voice of Luffy. One of Toei's rules was that a woman must voice Luffy. So yes, that's then there we go with my next point. Every edit in One Piece was approved by Toei. That weird-looking hammer gun? Approved by Toei. Skipping all those episodes of the Little Garden arc? Approved by Toei. Like, turning Laboon into an iceberg? Approved by Toei. Poison suction cups? It's sucking me in like a big toilet. I guess that makes you desert doo-doo. Yes. Approved. You you get the picture. Anyway, so yeah. But anyway, four kids... Um... When four kids realized just how bad, just how much they'd have to edit in order to to get one piece to fit on a Saturday morning block, they were they realized they were in over their heads. So, but at this point, the ink was already dry on the contract. To simply stop dubbing it, they would end up losing a lot more money, and they'd end up owing a huge termination fee to Toei. So, four kids kind of purposely made a mess out of One Piece, intending for it to fail, just because, just so they could finally re- they be like, oh well, you know, One Piece wasn't successful, you, uh, you could have the license back, Toei. <laughs> All edits were, yep. Which leads to uh, our next... Uh, our next one, there's a rumor going around that Studio Piero wasn't happy with the way four kids handled Mew Mew Power or Tokyo Mew Mew, which is why they couldn't dub the second half. Then, like I said before, you know, Studio Piero would have to have approved every edit that was made. Ma- changing the setting to America? Approved by Studio Piero. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't need, do I need to, ex- to go through this like that again? Yeah, I, I'm starting to sound too condescending. But anyway... According to Hika Yagami, the reason they were unable to dub the second half is because their toy deal with Bandai fell through. Huh? Yeah, Hika Yagami is a YouTuber um, who is very, very big in the Tokyo Mew Mew and Mew Mew Power fan base way, 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 way back when the show was first being dubbed. They're a very reliable source on this. Now, rumor number four. Now... It's starting with Shadow the Hedgehog. You might also remember that the cast from the Sonic X dub was put in the video games, inc- including Jason Griffiths as Sonic and Amy Pallant as Tails. So there's a rumor going around that it was because Dean Bristow, the voice of Dr. Eggman in Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 and Sonic Heroes, was had died, and that when Sega contacted Mike Pollock, who did the voice of Eggman in Sonic X, that there was some contract going around that, and if to cast Mike Pollock, they had to cast the entire D of the Sonic X dub. That is wrong. Mike Pollock himself had told Sonic News Network that the recasting had happened before Dean Bristow passed away. In addition... Ryan Drummond, the voice of Sonic from Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 and Heroes, har- is not angry at Jason Griffiths and actually thinks he's not a bad voice actor. The only reason he was ever upset in the first place is because this sort of the decision was fully made without um any without informing him at all. And also four kids didn't even make the decision. Sega of Japan made the decision. Not even Sega of... Yep, not Sega of US. Sega of Japan made the decision to use the Sonic X cast in the Shadow the Hedgehog and the games that followed. 
So anyway, around 2004, um, four kids decided to respond to the anime back to the backlash by releasing some uncut DVDs of Yu-Gi-Oh and Shaman King. These DVDs contained new dubs with with no paint edits and dialogue that much more closely matched that of the Japanese version, with the exception being the na- some of the names like Joey, Taya, and Tristan were capped. Uh, which, I'll, I'll, although a part of me wonders how much what if Konami had to say in that or what, given that given the names of the decks, and they may Konami might have forced them to do that just for just for consistency with the card game. So yeah. There's a rumor going around that 4Kids' uncut DVDs were cancelled due to legal issues with Funimation, their their distributor Funimation. However, that isn't true. Funimation had... Because Funimation had actually continued distributing edited DVDs of Yu-Gi-Oh! Plus, they were distributing edited DVDs of of Ninja Turtles and Winx Club, which a lot of people don't know because some people keep associ- associate Funimation with anime and anime only, but Funimation was distributing a lot of children's shows too. Believe it or not, they I mean they distributed Fight Spider Riders, which was owned by Cookie Jar at the time, and get this, Degrassi: The Next Generation. <laughs> I bet that's the last show anyone expected me to associate with Funimation. But apparently, those, I don't know about Shaman King, but those Yu-Gi-Oh! DVDs were actually cancelled due to licensing issues with Shunsuke Kazama. This actually happened much later when... This was proven much later when four kids attempted to upload um, raw and subbed episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! To their, to their YouTube channel later, as well as the short-lived website Toonzaki, which was a site for uncut and dubbed anime. Four Kids did split with Funimation much later, but that was due to contract reasons, and it didn't happen until 2009. Which also brings me to another rumor. that The reason that the last half of Season 3 of the Four Kids Winx dub wasn't on DVD had nothing to do with Nick, with Nick claiming the license. It was because they split with Funimation, which happened before Nick, lo, Nick, took, before Nick took the license. Huh? Oh, uh, wait, I actually put that on my next slide. I probably should have gone over this before I went. I looked at it, yeah. Rumor number six. The amount they put into One Piece is what nearly pushed four kids into bankruptcy. That is wrong. It was one of their original properties that actually pushed them closer to bankruptcy than One Piece ever could. It all started in 2006, when... What the company now known as the Pokemon Company International, known then as Pokemon USA Incorporated, had taken the license to Pokemon from four kids. Um, Pokemon US, the Pokemon Company didn't exist back when it was licensed at first because Nintendo didn't really know the kind of hit that, that that it was going to become. What was then called Pokemon USA was formed in 2001 as... Um, as the Pokemon branch of Nintendo, and they would later take over the card game from Withers of the Coast. They couldn't have taken the anime at that point because Four Kids' uh, contract lasted until 2006. And just like with the whole thing with, with Four Kids themselves in One Piece, you know, trying to take the license there and then would they end up owing a huge termination fee to Four Kids. So, yeah. After Pokemon, after they lost Pokemon, that is when Four Kids' um, profit margin started to chip away. They weren't really getting any gains at the time, so their answer to this was to ha- was to create a Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh type property, something nobody could take from them, something they would own lock, stock, and barrel, and that was chaotic. <laughs> Chaotic was originally an obscure Danish card game with a small story element, but like I said, four kids bought the rights to this entire thing completely. They produced everything. They created the cartoon from scratch, and you might remember the online card game also created from scratch. Four kids handled most of the merchandising themselves too, so they were putting a little more into this, and it seemed to be paying off. Uh, and and they, it seemed to be paying off. Um, every year, they... The prof there every year they 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 kept losing money, but they but th- 
do in Part Chaotic, they started losing less and less. And right when they were nearing the break-even point, BAM! The economic recession of 2008-09 um, destroyed any chance Chaotic had of taking off, even though it was already, you know, going toe-to-toe with Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic on the, on the selling card game lists. But thanks to the economy, any chance it had of being a success or pulling four kids out of their rut to uh, down the drain, huh? This actually caused a, made a much bigger blow to four kids' profits than One Piece ever could. Because with One Piece, or with anime shows, you just, you know, you just license it, you, re, you, you rewrite it, you rescript it, and then boom. But the thing is, it's not like you have to re- create an entirely original story from scratch, even if it felt like that was what they were doing with One Piece. But they weren't. Chaotic, they made the whole thing from scratch. They paid for all the animation, they paid for all the storyboards, they... The, the everything, everything of Chaotic was came from their own pockets, uh, and that's what put them in a bigger rut. Huh? Also, there's a rumor, another small rumor going around that Four Kids tried to sue the creators over profits. This one's not as well known. It's mostly really only well known in the Chaotic fan base and not Four Kids itself. I literally have again. It was the recession. I I remember following the threads on Toon Zone, also known as Anime Superhero. Yeah, I was the user Donkey Kong song. Um, back then I had an avatar of the Seeky Boogie Duke bomb from Demented Cartoon Movie, and now I have a Nedna from Simpsons avatar. That was me. I was following those threads, and somewhere in those threads you'll see everything about the recession and everything about Chaotic that came before. I literally have no idea where this stupid rumor came from, anyway. All right. So then, come come 2010, four kids decided to lean on anime again, since that's what made them so popular the first in the first place. They acquired the rights to Dragon Ball Z Kai, which was airing on Nicktoons at the time, and they reformed. Even though it was still mostly reruns, they formatted their the CW Four Kids block that they had bought earlier. I should have probably mentioned that uh, to Toons Eye. <laughs> and now let's see. Did I put- so, in addition, four kids seemed to be pulling, about to pull themselves out of their rut. They had so many new shows ready to come. Like, they had reacquired Magi Nation from Cookie Jar, which previously aired on Kids WB, but had a, la- a big production break with the late season two. Um, Dragon Ball Z Kai was already airing, and they were going to air season two of that. I probably should have added the Blue Piccolo rumor thing to this, too. Uh, they had a new light distributor in A&E Home Video, which was going to release the Yu-Gi-Oh! 3D movie, Bonds Beyond Time, and they had some Jules, Extraordinary Adventures of Jules Verne cartoon, which was done also done by Rainbow, the same people who did um, Winx Club and Huntix Secrets and Seekers, and also later Regal Academy and 44 Cats, but those, that's neither here nor there. They had also acquired the, rights, the broadcast rights to Monsuno, which you might remember from Nick Toons and Blue Dragon, that had aired on Cartoon Network very, very briefly, but most of the dub didn't even it actually did not air at all. So, with everything, ev- things were looking bright, bright for four kids once again. With all these licensing deals in place, it felt like maybe they'd pull themselves out of their rot. Wrong. Then came another blow. Four kids got sued by TV Tokyo and Nihon Ad Systems for allegedly hiding some of the money that they ha- and the profits they had made from Yu-Gi-Oh! And then most of those companies I just mentioned, Funimation, Cookie Jar, Viz, um, Rainbow, and... Uh, I forgot who was, who was in charge of Monsuno. All of them left. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! was going to be on Nicktoons earlier for that reason, but Nick dropped out too. Everything was all of their all of their business deals were gone because they didn't want anything to do with four kids during this lawsuit. So, and this the, the thing is, four kids couldn't do anything to, uh, in response to the time. They had to continue dubbing five Ds and then Zexel because if they weren't to doing that, that would basically be an admission of guilt. But. Uh, so all they were, so they were able to get Zex along with Tai Chi Chasers, because whichever company, I don't remember who was in charge of this one, but they apparently did trust four kids enough or it couldn't back out of the contract. So what happened during the case? Well, four kids won by default. 
Bang Zoom Studios had actually started working on a dub of Yu-Gi-Oh's Exile behind their back because TV Tokyo and Nihon Ad Systems were confident that Four Kids was going to lose the case. Boy, were they wrong. Um, because of this, they literally handed Four Kids the case on a silver platter. Their dub, you may have heard of it, had um, Vic Mignogna, Shark, and Johnny Young Bosch's Yuma. Um... You can find a couple clips of it online, and apparently 26 full episodes were complete, but it'll never see the light of day because of this lawsuit. So, with, but like I said, four kids, um, all of the, with all their business practices gone, what's left to do? Liquidate. Huh? They ended up selling um, their TV block on the CW to Saban Brands, who later reformatted it into the Vortex. The rights to Yu-Gi-Oh! were sold to... Uh, to Konami, um, which formed the subsidiary 4K Media Inc., now known as Konami Cross Media New York. Huh? That's what the production studio for 4 Kids used to be, huh? is now. And so, yes, yeah, Saban also had, at the time, had bought the rights to Cubix, as w which might still remain with them now that they themselves have been bought, bought by Hasbro, along with the broadcast rights to Dragon Ball Z Kai and the, and the, the, and whatever rights were left to Sonic X, huh? Mm -hmm. So Four Kids rebranded once again as Four Licensing Corporation, and they've basically edited, exited the TV business completely. Huh? And now they're just you know licensing products again. That's pretty much all they do now. And here are all of here's all the sources that I've mentioned before. Um, Wow, I this uh, panel only lasted about 26 minutes. And to think I was worried I was going to be oversharing and talking too much about this. And if I can get a 30-minute slot, and maybe I'll, I'll either try to see if I can get a 30-minute slot or see if I can extend the panel over to an hour. Well, I'll think about it. Um, if anyone was watching this, thanks for coming. Uh, I hope I still hope I can get this at uh, Anime USA or even Otakon if it's going to be this short. Huh? I'll I'll add some more information that I that I regret cutting out, but uh, see you and panel.